Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and wait for it. There it is. It's a magic picture changer today. And we're going to use Year 7, Dandy Day, Butterfly Kisses, Really High Five, Party Animal, and Upon a Star. The Meadow Backdrop Portrait in green watercolor wishes paper. And this is the magic picture changer and the add-on. So I'm going to make a background and I'm going to ink blend it because I wanted to use regular cardstock. I felt like it was thicker for my magic picture mechanism. And so I'm using Salty Ocean and starting off the paper, I'm ink blending uh, using the uh, life-changing blender brushes and I really wanted a soft light sky kind of to match that green of the watercolor wishes paper so I knew that the part that I come in heavy so <laughs> I knew that would be under the grass and I even have fingerprints on it but <laughs> all right so I'm inking up the other pieces and now I'm going to roll them through the die cut machine and there they are all set to go and i'm gonna tuck the magic picture changer into the meadow and i want some grass on the add-on piece so i'm cutting it i'm cutting that little part that was cut out of the middle with the meadow again and now with the magic picture add-on and the bottom will be tucked in so you won't see anything that has a little bit of grass cut out. And that's the way it looks. I'm going to put a little piece of the Watercolor Wishes cardstock on the bottom just to cover anything that might show. And then adhere that. Now it's time to put together the Magic Picture Changer. So I'm folding at the score line at the top and reinforcing that with my bone folder. And then there are uh, score lines at an eighth of an inch in on the two sides. And so I'm folding those down and reinforcing those as well. You may have noticed that I did not put any uh, stamping on the magic picture changer before I started which is usually the way these are put together but I'm going to try to stamp on it after it's done well now I'm going to put on an eighth of an inch uh, double-sided tape on both of the insides of that magic picture changer and then fold that down on inside and that's going to kind of create a channel for the other part of the mechanism to stay in bounds to stay straight while it's going up and down i'm applying some anti-static powder to both parts of the mechanism it helps it move smoothly and now i am putting the pieces together so i slipped the smaller piece into the top of the larger one and then I am now putting each one the tabs into the slit below it then fold that back down and there it slides up and down all right but now I want to make sure that that's all lined up well and then add the eighth inch double-sided tape to the outside of that eighth inch little track and then that will close up the magic picture changer so take off the uh, backing and fold it down and there it is it's all set I like to move it up and down a bit to make sure that it's working smoothly and one thing that helps me when I'm making them is to reinforce the tab by die cutting another tab and slipping it just a little bit into the back of the magic picture changer and just uh, doubling up that tab so then as people are pulling it up and down it doesn't seem to buckle at all and this is the tab top that 
we'll put on there, but I'm going to wait to put that on a little bit later. But now it's time to stamp up our images. So I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink. It's Copic friendly and I'll be using Copics today. You see that banner up at the top? I decided not to use that, but uh, our party goers and some party decorations, I actually stamp out those balloons, presents and hats and a couple other extra hats and that confetti a few times so that we could have a lot of decorations at our party. Now there's a lot to color here but I'm only going to show the pinata and the fox and bear today so that uh, you can kind of get an idea of how I colored everything. And for this pinata I looked at different ones on Pinterest or on I googled them. <laughs> I kind of use all those resources to see what colors I wanted to use and ended up deciding on this combination but I like to put the darker shadows where uh, it would be underneath the the layer that's on top of it and also to give a little bit of definition to those kind of scallopy looking fringes at the bottom. And the colors I used on the piñata are the same ones that I used in the balloons and presents and other decorations for the party. So it's a combination of RV2123-25 for the pink, the YR14 and 68 for the orange, YG0105 and 07 for the green, and then a BG000102 and a 05. And these party goers come from all different stamp sets. That little bunny is from Upon a Star. And the mice are from Dandy Day. And the fox and the bear are from the uh, Butterfly Kisses set. I took some of the uh, party favors, uh, the round balloon and confetti from Really High Five. And then some of the party favors are from party animals. So the blower and the oval balloon. And so it's just, it's a party. It's <laughs> everybody got together. All right. Well, my fox is a combination of E11 and 13. And the darkest I go is a 17. And then to redden him up, I used an R02 and an R05, and that kind of gives me my uh, brownish-red fox color combination. Now, there are other combinations I've seen people use. Um, I think Eloise uses a great combination. Uh, if you want to check out her foxes that she's done, and also uh, Maureen has uh, ones that she uses with her Spectrum Noir. So there's just a lot of great combinations out there. And it's kind of fun to see what other people are using for his ears and tail and all the little white parts. I'm using a warm gray and then just adding some pink to his ears along with some browns. All right, a little pink on everybody's cheeks and dabbing those up a little. Now those, uh, the bunny was colored in warm grays. The mouse that is blowing was done in E70 and 71. And then the other mouse was in cool grays. So nice variations on those neutrals. And then here's our bear and he is mainly E30. So 30, 31, 33, and 35. And I might even use a little E37 in some of the corners there. And the way I usually color is to take my lightest and put it where I think the shadows are going to be. And if I like where they are, I'll add in the dark colors and then blend them out into the body with the lighter shades. So we're going to move along to his tummy. And this is an E11 and 13. And then I mix those a little bit with the E30s just to kind of get them to blend a little bit together but still look different than the main body. Give him some pink in his ears and cheeks and a little brown and he's all set. 
So now I can take the coordinating dies for each of these and with a little post-it tape, I'm going to stick them down so that they don't move. And I'll do that to all of these, but I'm just going to show you these uh, coordinating dies for the different pieces. One thing I love is that that confetti, uh, it's three that stamp at one time, but the die cuts them out individually. So you get lots of cute little confetti pieces. So there they all are ready to go on the card. But first, back to that magic picture changer, we need to put in the sentiment. And so I'm putting the pinata above to see where I want to put that sentiment. And this is with the magic picture changer closed. And I layered everything together. So now I know exactly where I want to stamp them within that little square area for the frame. So I stamped those out with jet blank ink and now with the magic picture changer open I'm putting in the candy that comes along with this little pinata and I'm just uh, stamping that out with the stamp block and there's also this cute little piece of confetti so I'm gonna scatter that around as well. So rather than figuring out where to stamp before I cut out the Magic Picture Changer pieces, I decided to see if it would work to stamp it out while it's put together. Well, so far so good, but now I'm going to put in some coloring and I thought, well, should I do this with colored pencil? Because I know marker can bleed through, but I was very careful just to give it a one coat and it did not bleed through. So I was very thrilled with that. And now I'm going to just adhere everything together. And with the add-on piece, it's a frame, uh, but I just want to put eighth inch score tape in the corners, kind of going down towards each corner so that it doesn't uh, interfere with the mechanism going up and down. And there's a little blade of grass that came out. So taking a little glue and uh, putting that in, just a, a little... Uh, light gardening there. So now that it's set, I can take off that release paper and put it on top of the Magic Picture Changer. The Magic Picture Changer die set itself comes with another frame that you can use. This one's just a little bit bigger that fits the entire frame and so uh, I just like the look of it. It helps it to incorporate into the rest of the scene. So speaking of the scene, here is the meadow backdrop and I'm just putting some glue on the back and adding it to my inked up background. And I did not put glue on the bottom part of that grass so that my magic picture changer can be tucked down into there. And now I'm putting on that little tab on the top and I'm using some eighth inch uh, double-sided tape, which you could use different types of tape. Tape runner would be fine or glue. And I am using the double-sided tape on the back of this just so that it stays put. Uh, if somebody gets kind of... Uh, enthusiastic <laughs> with pulling it up and down it's not going to go anywhere so I tucked it inside and I decided I wanted the grass to be a little brighter at the bottom and uh, this is a a challenge for me being so heavy-handed I didn't want to mess this up now that it's all together but it's fine it worked out fine and you can see where the magic picture changer is tucked into the grass, but there will be enough little guys and pieces all around that that's not going to be a, a real problem with the ink uh, kind of being stronger on those parts. All right, finishing that up. So it was a uh, Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn Distress Inks. Now, this little piece of the balloon it from Really High Five is what I'm going to use as the pinata stick for the fox. And uh, I could put it behind him or in front of him to show that he's holding it, but I'm going to clip in between his paws and 
and have it sitting kind of inside there so it looks like it's between both. Now it's time to get ready for the party so everybody is donning their party hats and uh, the little mouse that looks like he's blowing over there. I added the the horn to him and so it's kind of being held by his paw and up by his lips and there you can see him there but uh now I just put everything where I thought I might want it on the card and now I'm gluing it all down so I'm taking the glue tube and a jewel picker and just picking things up putting a dab of glue under and then for the animals I have a tape runner and then also uh, partially putting them down with foam tape if they are sitting on top of the uh, magic picture changer and kind of hanging off of it. So they are all ready for this get together and I made sure that nobody's right in front of that horn. I don't know, does that really bother <laughs> bothered me. So I had to move the bunny over so she didn't, you know, get blasted with the horn. But now I'm taking a Copic multi-liner. This is a point three, and adding in some balloon strings for the ones that you would see. I'm going to make sure that everything is adhered down. So there you can see I put a little foam tape on the side that was hanging off of the magic picture changer and some adhesive where it's sitting on top. So it rests evenly, and now I can put in that balloon string there for for that one. And I'm holding my breath at this point because <laughs> everything is done, and I didn't want to mess it up with my freehand uh, drawing of lines. But it worked out just fine, and I can put the bear down, and he kind of hides the the balloon lines and add just a little there where I missed and it's time to get that stick wielding fox ready to go. So I put some foam tape on one side and some tape runner on the other and a little glue to hold the stick. And we'll get his stick there in between his paws. And now we can just put him up. And I want to make sure that you can read the sentiment so that the stick isn't in front too much but also that it looks like he's ready to, to whack that pinata. And I'm gonna hang it up and tie it with a bow. I have some little strings coming off of it. And I put some tape runner on the pinata and now he's attached. Now it's time to toss that confetti into the air. So I'm throwing it around the card. Uh, not randomly though, I want it to look just where I want it. And then I glued that down and I cut a little uh, bit of that tab out of cilantro cardstock and put a little glue in there. And now I have a tab with the arrow showing up. Put some tape runner on the back of the panel and I'm attaching it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folded note card. Hope your birthday is a smash and you get a lot of candy. <laughs> well, the candy was looking a little flat because I was careful not to overcolor, but now I realize I can color a little bit, a little more. So I'm shading just slightly with the darker Copic color and it worked out fine, no bleeding. And this card is all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today, and if you did, if you would like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!